Dr. Eli Karam in the studio, University of Louisville Kent School of Social Work. He is president of the Kentucky Association for Marriage and Family Therapy. Hey, Eli. Good to see you, buddy. It's been too long. Yeah, you, you're over there teaching school, too, aren't you? Yes, I've been teaching in the afternoon, a late class on a Friday, so it's delayed my uh, my visits, but it's good is to it, see you. Uh, is it difficult to get people to pay attention uh, when March Madness, we're on the front porch of March Madness over at U of L. It, it is you gotta you gotta mix it up, but it's it's but it's, it's nice. It's excitement level on campus. The red out tomorrow uh, at the game, so it's a, it's a fun part uh, to be a part of as far as be a a professor at U of L during uh, March Madness. That's I don't for sure. I can find something red to wear to the game though. I'm only kidding. I, I'm I think you're good. Plenty of red things there, including my neck. It always <laughs> works. I always get in that way. That's for sure. All right, we always talk about communication over and over again. When you come in, we talk about how powerful communication is, particularly verbal communication, because sometimes we're guys, and sometimes guys are a little stuffed on whether or not they can verbalize what's going on with them. And sometimes they think, okay, here's a card. I can't say it. The best thing always is to use your own words, isn't it? you, you got to use your own words. We talk so much also about these fair fighting skills and what to do after a fight and after a tear you need to repair. Well, part of the repair is giving an apology the right way, Terry. So that's what we want to talk about today. So if you're listening out there, whether it be with your partner or a significant other or any kind of family member, there's some things you got to do if you want to make a real, authentic apology to repair. So All right, hang on. Let me stop it? you right there right. and ask this one question here from this very popular song from a few years ago. Is it ever too late to apologize? Uh, there is a window in the sense that, um, you know, if you don't apologize the right way or if you do it for, let me say this, with less than sincere motivations, it is going to fall flat. So I think the biggest rule is it's got to be a genuine acknowledgement of your part without any defensiveness. I'm sorry, but disqualifies um, the apology. So you have to really think, I, like I've told you many times, I've never seen any relationship where one person is 100% of the blame. But if you messed up, uh, whether that be a little mess up or a bigger mess up in the confines of your relationship, you have to acknowledge your part in a really sincere way. So that's step number one. Unless you can really feel bad about what you did, don't apologize. All right. You used the critical word there, too, and I've heard it before. We've gone over this before. When you say something to someone and you're trying to lock eyes and say something important and you say what you need to say and then you add the word but, everything you just said goes up in smoke, That's doesn't right. it? That's right. It promotes defensiveness. You're not taking full accountability. So, Well, I, if I said something wrong and, and I'm just sorry and then a but, and then right then all you're saying is, I didn't really mean that because I really I want to hit you in the face one more time with, you did this, you did that, whatever. Right. You've got to take that out of the lexicon. It's right, because you, you, in an apology, you're not defending your turf. You're making a genuine acknowledgement. And to do that, you have to make an empathic connection of what it was like for your partner. You don't necessarily have to agree with your partner's reality, but you have to be empathic to understand their pain, their disappointment, whatever they were going through, which is a kind of a vulnerable emotion. You can't, like, rush through that. You have to acknowledge it, and then you're part in it. And really, it's the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the sense that uh, honesty is the best policy. And if you add the but or if you try to – add some type of excuse, it really blocks the genuineness. And this is hard for some people because to really admit that they let someone down close to them is difficult. And because they, they're, they're looking at it as a balance. Well, you, I feel badly because I did the da 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 but, and so they're trying to balance it out and saying, the only reason I did it is because you did this, and you just have to cut that second part off. It's, it's tough to swallow those words, but swallow them. Swallow them. Uh, and it's, if this person means a lot to you, that's the other thing, too. The more investment you have in the person in the relationship, whether it's a, a family member, a child, or your significant other, I mean, you should be able to uh, hold back the defensiveness. Uh, and I asked, another tip is it's words plus actions, okay? Um, the idea that you can say you're sorry, and some people can do it very genuinely and they mean it, but then the same process or cycle repeats itself. So it's like in doing this, you need a plan for most couples, even though they 
the kind of the content may change if you if you follow what I'm saying. The process is very similar. So not only do you need words, you need actions, and you need a game plan. So the next time a scenario like this happens, like uh, an overspending or blowing drinking, off your, yeah, on the something weekend. like that, something blowing off your partner or stepping on your partner's vulnerability, you need a plan to talk about the process and offer assurances and safeguards. So that's not going to happen again. And because if you keep, you know, you might apologize, but if you keep doing the same thing over and over, you know, fool me once, right. and fool me twice. Uh, but the idea is that, uh, you know, when you are doing this, you have to also have some type of reparative ritual. And some guys want to jump in right to the reparative ritual, i.e. something like sex or going yeah, out. Yeah, baby. Something. Right. And what's what, wrong with that? And what's wrong with that? Well, it, if you don't do these other steps first, you're not going to have the, oh, the you physical buzz connection. Kill. You buzz kill you. I'm trying not to. I'm trying to enhance what you have going. I was liking where this was going until then. <laughs> well, sex is Look, reparative. Look, I said I'm sorry. Yeah, let's have it. Let's go. <laughs> I want to say I'm sorry in the bedroom, right? Uh, but the reality is that is a restorative and reparative things for great couples. I said I'm sorry, and I heard that idiot Terry Miner say, don't say but, and the rest of it. I didn't say that. I said I'm sorry. Let's go. That's right. but That doesn't work. No, that doesn't work. But the, the sex can be a reparative thing if you do these other steps first. It's like the, uh, the final part of the repair, the physical intimacy. But the reality is if you're mad at someone in a long-term relationship, you're not going to want to be intimate with them. So this idea of makeup sex, it's, it's really, uh, it's in context. It's in context of doing this emotional, uh, empathic connection and validation first. All right. Oh man, you're. I'm taking notes here furiously. No, I'm oh. kidding. <laughs> no, Terry, I got a great relationship. My, you, you, you know my wife. She is just so uh, she's so easy to get along with. You, yeah, and and I should say other things. If you're listening to this, right? It's fighting is not predictive of who makes it and who doesn't in these long-term relationships. We got a lot of science behind uh, the you know a, a couples therapy and long-term couples and really what it says it's it's how you fight and how yeah. you repair after this tear. So if you're doing these things, in fact, if you can tear and repair, a lot of people believe your relationship is stronger. Um, but you got to do it the right way. And I say the truth just sounds different, Terry. It, your partner knows, your family member knows if you're honestly sorry for something versus if you're just exactly saying, I'm right. sorry, we fought for three hours. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, here you go. I'm sorry. That's exactly That's, that's right. not what we're talking about. See, I like the silent treatment. Yeah? I, I can go. How long can you go? Three months. Really? That's good. I'm only kidding. My wife's awesome in every way. And I'm wrong. I'm just start <laughs> saying it right now. I'm wrong, wrong, <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong. You know what? For the next time we're going to... I'm wrong already. In the future, I am wrong. <laughs> she doesn't hold me to any of that stuff. That's why I can joke about it on the air. All right, why don't you sit tight because we'll we have some more communication skills issues. Oh, yeah, let's you... talk about the flip side of uh, offering an apology, which is getting forgiveness. Oh, I like that. All right, we'll get to that in about 15 minutes, so sit tight there. I have no idea what either one of us just said. I know what you mean, Tracy Morgan. It's too late to finally get Back with weather and sports in a few here on 84 WHAS.